Ladies and today, Jason Derulo, it's a 840 Siege and Deb morning, everybody. Dave says 60% chance of showers today, about uh, 80. 80, can you believe 80? What is it? Like, it's not even April yet. <sighs> 80, the high today. It's just going to be sticky and muggy. It's really nice where this guy is in California. It's uh, Scott Rochetta with... Uh, now, your what is your your music label called? It's the Big Machine Label Group. The Big Machine Label mm-hmm. Group. <laughs> Appropriate. <laughs> uh, so people see you on American Idol, and I oftentimes, I, t- I tell people, I said, they say, well, which one is he? He's, he's, not, he's not Ryan. He's the other one. He's, he's, not, he's not J-Lo. Uh, uh, but, Definitely not J-Lo. No. Definitely not J-Lo. So, so Deb and I were talking off the air uh, earlier this morning. You are responsible for a lot of... Uh, big big stars, your their success. For instance, were, did you discover Taylor Swift? Yeah, I signed Taylor when she was fourteen years old. Fourteen. Yeah, and and you, I remember reading something about that once, and you said she was really really special even at that age. Yeah, it was pretty extraordinary. I was just getting ready to start Big Machine Records. I was actually still at Universal, and our very first meeting, she was just fascinating. She had this great. You know, she was she was very intelligent and sophisticated, yet still a fourteen year old girl. So, you know, she already had a bunch of great songs written, and it was really kind of an outlier moment. And it was one of those things. I look back to my notes from November second of two thousand and four from our first meeting, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I thought this could be, you know, my my Mick Jagger, if you will. Mm-hmm. Just, this, wow. this person could be on the cover of Rolling Stone. She could host Saturday Night Live. I just had all these thoughts over the next 24 hours. And, you know, it's really been an incredible ride. We're 11 years and, uh, you know, millions and millions of records later. And, and she's still just such an amazing human being. It's been really uh, an incredible blessing to work with her and watch her grow up into this beautiful woman. You you have a lot of other stars, big huge stars on your label. We were talking to uh, uh, Reba McIntyre. Other name some folks you have. Yeah, Tim McGraw, Rascal Flatts, Florida Georgia Line, Hank Jr., Martina McBride. Uh, we also have a few rock things. We have a new Cheap Trick record coming out tomorrow. How appropriate, right? April Fool's Day. New <laughs> Cheap Trick record. And uh, they get inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame next Friday. So a big couple of weeks for mm-hmm. for all those guys. So will and, we, yeah, we go from brand new to current to iconic. Will we see you wow. tonight on American Idol? Yeah, huge night tonight. We go from four to three. Mackenzie, the local boy, has done such a great job. And I have a song choice. So they'll have the big hometown homecoming packages. Then I have a choice for each of the contestants and the judges' choice. So we, we, we're down to four contestants. Tonight, you el- eliminate one. We get down to three. And it's it's McKenzie from Lafayette, of course. Trent, uh, He's Dalton. from Mississippi and lived in Louisiana, I believe, for a short time. Dalton's from Dallas. And then LaPortia from Macomb, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then tonight, each finalist uh, will perform three songs. As Scott said, one of the ju- one uh, judges pick. The other, Scott, will pick a song for them to do. And the third is each contestant's pick as a tribute to his or her hometown. Now, we got word <laughs> that Mackenzie is going to do Rhiannon mm-hmm. and... Yeah. Oh, he... Oh, oh well, you he, can, confirm, you can that? confirm that? I can. It's my pick. So here, here <gasps> was the, the thought behind that is when he did Michael Jackson, Billie Jean a couple weeks ago, just him and his guitar. It was fabulous. I thought... I thought, all right, how can I take some of those elements and put an iconic song on him where you can show off guitar playing a little bit and do what Mackenzie does, a kind of cool, wispy, vibey thing. Mm-hmm. And so I chose Rhiannon for him, and in rehearsal yesterday, it was just incredible. So I, I think he's going to have a great performance with it. So his, what are his other two songs, can you say? You know what? I can't say those, so you've got to tune in and watch. But okay. uh, you know, I, I've got approval to talk about my choices. So. We, we heard one of them is Hallelujah, I think. It's been yeah, reported. I mean, I, been I, reported. Yeah, I'm going to say that I, I, I heard that song ringing through the halls yesterday. How about yeah. that? <laughs> and then I, I heard Trent is going to do a, a Sam Smith song. I don't know about the rest of them. Um, so yeah, I can tell you about my, my choice for Trent. 
if any of you saw the CMA Awards and Justin Timberlake sing that amazing song, Drink You Away, that's what my choice for Trent is tonight. Oh, that'll be And it's be also up on iTunes as is uh, as a Mackenzie song, but so they're up now. Oh. Well, I thought I thought we were going to have trouble getting stuff out of you and that you would hang up on us, but you've been very kind. Hey, there's only two weeks left. Were they going to fire me? So, what do, so what, do, what do you think about this being the last uh, season for Idol? Everybody, it's kind of bittersweet for folks? Yeah, it's a lot more bitter than sweet because, it, you know, I hear from fans nonstop, how can this go away? And tonight will be the last ever show on that CBS television stage which has been there literally from day one because we move into the Dolby for our two-night finale next week. You have people who have been working on this show literally from day one, and we will have tonight's show, and every single American Idol that's made it through Hollywood Wood Week has performed on that stage. They literally start tearing it apart after we finish tonight's show, so you have a lot of people just going, I can't believe this is coming to an end. So not only is there a bunch of pressure on our top four, you have an emotional meter that's on 10 with with this amazing crew that has put on the show for 15 years. Can you tell us about any special surprises or special performances tonight or next week? Well, the, uh, the finale for next week, Nigel Lithgow has been working overtime literally for, for three months. And it's going to be the Super Bowl of American Idol next next week. It's going to be incredible. Carrie Underwood's coming back. There's a Kelly Clarkson performance. But some of the things that Nigel's working on that we can't yet talk about are going to be mind-blowing. This this is going to be a couple of weeks of some of the best television ever. And Keith Urban's uh, scheduled to perform tonight, I believe. And we finally got him off his butt behind the (laughs) desk. And he's going to, we'll see if he can walk the walk. But it's so funny because Keith actually is one of the, the coolest people on the planet. Uh, I love him dearly, and what I do really enjoy when Keith does perform during the season, all the things that he's been telling the contestants all year is what he does, and he always leaves it on the stage 100%. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best guitar players around, one of the best. He's just one of the best artists really anywhere in the world, and he's just as good as, as a person. So when Keith hits the stage, it's always such a highlight. And tell us a little something about Harry Connick Jr., our other Louisiana homegrown boy. You know, it's really interesting with Harry because he has such a different background than J-Lo or Keith or even myself from being, you know, how, how we got to the show, what our paths were. Mm-hmm. And he brings such a different perspective because he's not a pop artist. You know, he's, he's not known for his big hit song. He's known for being this great musician and, you know, the Sinatra things that he did back in early days. And so he brings a a very different perspective. And he comes from a family of teaching. So he really takes on that role. And sometimes when he might come across a little tough and a little hard on the contestants, if you understand his background and his psychology, it makes a lot more sense. So he really does care about the show. He really does care about these contestants. I can tell you that there's not ever a contestant that leaves once we get to, say, the top 24, that Harry does not go and find them after the show and and shake their hand and talk to them before they leave. It's something I've always been really impressed with since the first day. But Harry, it, he cares about those kids like you can't believe. No, Scott, will there be an American Idol tour after the, the season's over? There is no American Idol tour, so as the label, it's really great because last year making Nick Fradiani's record, we had to work around the tour, and it took a lot longer because we don't just want to throw a record out. We want to make sure that we get the right songs and that it's that it's a proper record. So the good news about no tour is whoever wins, we can really get down to making the record a lot quicker. I like the sound of that. And before you go, is there one, is there like a, a, a big secret about American Idol that we don't see on television that happens periodically, maybe every week? Is there some big, is there something funny, something interesting that we don't get to see at home on television that you see just about every week or have seen? Well, working on the show these last two years, the, we go to work literally the next day after the show. So we're working one and two weeks in advance on song selection. So literally the shows start every week from the song choices of the contestants. 
and we build the show around that. So when we talk about songs and the judges say, man, great song choice, etc., that really is the culmination of so much work. People don't understand how much time and effort it takes to put on a live TV show to that magnitude every week. So I would say just, you know, when you hear us talking about song selection, those are not cliches that we're not throwing that around. That is mission critical from the first moment we start talking about the following week. Well, uh, we, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us this morning. And um, we would like you to put in a good word for McKenzie tonight, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? you got to tune in and vote, everybody. It, you know, it was, I'm sure it's fantastic to have McKenzie back home. You know, with just four contestants to go, we'll go from four to three tonight. You've got to tune in and you've got to vote. Scott Borchetta, thank you so what much. A pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You. Good, good to talk with you this morning. DJ and Deb, thanks. Have a great day, and uh, good luck, Mackenzie, tonight. Amen.